Hi folks, welcome to this video about Big IP in Amazon Web Services EC2. We'll be talking about some of the key features of the Big IP Virtual Edition. These include iControl REST and iControl SOAP for automation, LTM and GTM for traffic management and optimization, web application security with ASM. We'll discuss how to manage policy across deployments using IAPS, and how you can visualize application performance using Splunk. To finish up, we'll talk about some of the ways you can try out the Virtual Edition of Big IP in AWS. To get started, let's talk about the deployment topology. We have deployed two virtual editions of Big IP, one running Big IP DNS, formerly known as GTM, and the other running LTM and ASM. These Big IPs will handle web traffic for a client located on a public subnet and proxy that traffic to a demonstration vulnerable web app called Hackazon. We have deployed a Splunk Enterprise EC2 instance as a high-speed logging endpoint this entire deployment exists within a single availability zone that we could easily scale out across zones using GTM. To set up the deployment, we've leveraged iControl REST to configure Big IP. iControl REST is a convenient REST-based interface to Big IP, which allows standardized automation across any cloud or private environment. We've used CloudFormation templates to atomically create compute and network resources in AWS, Docker to run our application, and orchestrated this all with Ansible. So let's go take a look at what we've actually deployed in AWS. The first thing I'd like to show is where we have used CloudFormation templates for various components of our deployment. There are CloudFormation stacks for the analytics host, which are our Splunk instance, for the client, which we're on JMeter. Down below, you'll see the GTM CloudFormation template and the Big IP template. As an example, let's take a look at the Big IP instance that is running Big IP DNS or GTM. Here we're running as an M3 extra large. We've created a custom security group for this instance, and we're running the 11.6 better license package. Okay, so speaking of GTM, it is now known as Big IP DNS. And what GTM allows us to do is to monitor uh, LTM server objects to make sure that they are available before resolving DNS requests to them. With Big IP DNS, we can do some great things like control the behavior of DNS resolution when servers are down, or when you want to scale across availability zones. Here I am logged into AWS in the EC2 portal, and I'm looking at the instances that are running. I've got five instances that are running. I want to focus on the Big IP and the Big IP that's running Big IP DNS. This first tab I have open here in my browser is the management portal, which is the first interface. I'm connected over to the Elastic IP address, which is attached to the private IP address on that interface. The same is true for the Big IP here I have running GTM, you'll see that I'm logged in over the Elastic IP address, which is attached to that port. If we look at GSOB data centers, I've created a data center object for US East 1. That's the AWS region that I'm running in. You'll see that in that region, there is a server here representing this big IP running LTM. This IP address here is the Elastic IP address attached to the external port for this big IP running LTM. And we can see that here if we look at the interface in the EC2 portal. You'll see it's 52, 23, 116, 166. Now let's look at how the big IP DNS module will hand out the IPs for the virtual servers when resolving DNS requests. So if we go to DNS wide IPs, you'll see here I have a wide IP for demo.example.com. The pool members for the demo.example.com wide IP correspond to the virtual servers running on the LTM. So here I've got 172.16.1349. Then here on the big IP running LTM, I have a virtual server with that same IP address, 172.16.1349. Now the important part here is that this server and the virtual server running on it are actually being monitored 
with the Big AP Health Monitor, which is a more advanced way to monitor the health of your application than, say, a basic HTTP monitor. Now that we've talked about how we can use LTM and Big AP DNS to manage the availability of our application, let's move on to discussing ASM or the Application Security Manager module. In our demo here, we've deployed a simple web application firewall policy that's aimed at blocking some basic Linux vulnerabilities. Here to demonstrate these vulnerabilities, I've deployed an application called Hackazon, which is a vulnerable web app. If we visit the application over HTTP, you can see the Hackazon main page. Now remember that this application is running behind the virtual server I set up via the IAP. In that IAP, we've configured an SSL offload capability with a redirect. So if I hit the virtual server on port 80, I'm going to get redirected to HTTPS. To demonstrate the vulnerability, I want to actually just use a simple curl command. I'm going to curl against the IP address of the web application server. Normally the web application server would not be accessible from the internet, but in this case I've given it a public IP. In the curl command, I'm going to include a basic OS commanding attack. I get back a full 200 OK web response with the content. Now let's try to do that same attack, but let's hit the virtual server IP instead. In this case, here's the IP of the virtual server that I visited in my browser just a second ago. If I run the attack, you'll see that I get a blocking page. If we log into the Big IP running ASM, we can see why that attack was blocked. So let's go log in. Once I'm logged in, I'm going to look at the event logs for application security and look at the requests that have been blocked. I'll look at requests here for my particular web application firewall policy. And if you look at this most recent request, here, an attack signature was detected, the type was command execution, and we can see the request that was made. So what's great here is we were able to get some very simple attack blocking without any additional configuration for the, our particular application. So now let's assume that we want to attach an ASM policy to all our application deployments. Well, one way to enforce that would be through the usage of IAPs. IAPs allow you to build a templated configuration definition and a UI representation which allow the easy instantiation of that configuration by providing specific variables for your given deployment. F5 offers some officially supported IAPs on downloadsetf5.com and there are additional IAPs available on the CodeShare in DevCentral. In our particular demo we have used an IAP from DevCentral that allows us to set up a redirect from 80 to 443. It helps us to configure some basic TCP optimization and we are able to attach an ASM policy. I'm going to go visit the Big AP I was logged into one more time. This is the Big AP that's running local traffic manager and Big AP DNS. Here's the IAP I've deployed. You can see the number of configuration objects that were configured as a part of this IAP. Here's the ASM policy I attached. Farther below are the certificates that I specified to be part of my application on the server or client side. We can see the UI representation if we go to the reconfigure tab. You can see here we've deployed from the HTTP backport template. Down below are the questions that someone would need to answer when they're instantiating this template. These questions allow tenants or administrators to deploy more complex services and they would be able to configure in Big IP themselves. The last thing I want to mention is the use of Splunk to provide traffic analytics and visualization for our application deployment. We're running Splunk as an EC2 instance in the same VPC and availability zone. As our client generates traffic running JMeter, we ship traffic metrics to Splunk. Those metrics are defined in an analytics profile that we've configured on the box using iControl REST. You can see that profile here under local traffic, profiles, analytics, VIP1, demo analytics is the profile we created. 
Down at the bottom here, you can see some of the metrics that we're sending to Splunk. These include things like page load time, user sessions, or the client IP address that we're receiving requests from. Now finally, let's go to Splunk to see what the dashboard actually looks like. Here I'm going to log into the Splunk server that's running as an EC2 instance. And now that I'm logged in on the left hand side, you can see there are several F5 plugins for Splunk. This plugin here is the plugin for security. And within this plugin, I'm going to visit the top security events dashboard. Now, on this dashboard, I can view the events associated with the ASM or web application firewall policy I deployed. You can see that there are events plotted by time. We can also scroll down and we can look at the different attack types that are occurring. We could also look at attack signatures or severity levels for these events. That wraps up this demo. I hope I have given you some good reasons to try out the virtual edition of Big IP in AWS or other virtual environments. If you'd like to do so, you can download an eval license, met5.com. You can contact your local sales representative for a lab license, or you can try the free 30-day image in AWS.